So I was thinking, well, is there an attack that, that, uh, that could be done against one of those openers that would result in that scenario where the, a person would be able to break into a car, get a signal out of a garage door opener, and then be able to repeatedly enter the house? Uh, and, and what I figured out is, well, it's easy enough for them to enter just once, right? If you, get, if you break into the car, if you're out of range of the garage, and you clone one code, then if you go back to the garage before the legitimate opener remote goes back, then you can get in once. And if you can get in once, you can get in many times because you can just grab a universal remote uh, and program the, remote, the garage door opener when you're in there, right? So the attack is you break into the car, you record a code, then you go to the garage before the, uh, before the owner of the garage gets back, you replay the code to get into the garage, and then you take your off-the-shelf universal garage door opener and program the, uh, program the opener to respond to yours in addition to the legitimate one. Seems it works just fine. Uh, the codes, or the, the signal that is u signaling that's used in all the garage door openers and remote keyless entry systems I've seen is on-off keying. Uh, and you may recall that that is one of the modulation modes that the IME supports, that the CC1110 supports. Um, in this case, in the one I was playing with, uh, it was, uh, was on-off keying, but you'll notice that some of the pulses that are on uh, are kind of are short and some of them are long. And so really it's a form of pulse width modulation. The, the bits are encoded where like a short, a short pulse is a zero and a long pulse is a one or something like that. Uh, so it's, it's pretty straightforward to decode and the IME is totally capable of receiving and transmitting these signals. Uh, so we decided to give it a try. Um, does this? You hit it once more and it'll play. It'll play? Yep. Wow. Modern technology. So real men open their garage doors like this. Uh, so I, I also recently have been playing with another device. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have seen things like this. This is an eye clicker. Um, you may have seen uh, on Travis's blog, he did some interesting reverse engineering on the turning point, uh, what is it called, response card, response? Um, the turning point response card RF. Yeah, the turning point response card RF. Uh, so if, you've, if you follow his blog, you've seen a similar product. This is a competing product called an eye clicker. Both of these products are used for like instant audience feedback. Like we'd hand out a whole bunch of these to everybody in the audience and then we'd, we'd give you, ask you a multiple choice question and take an instant poll and put it on the screen. Um, and they're really, really popular today in colleges and universities. And Who likes mandatory attendance? <laughs> Show of hands. Yay, mandatory attendance. So cool. So connected. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, what, as it turns out, there are a lot of, pe lot of uh, college students that are interns in my office, and they all have these. And they're all kind of interested in hacking on them. I don't know why. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're, because they're required to take them to classes, and especially in big lecture halls, uh, the, the professors will take attendance uh, by just polling the, uh, uh, you know, all, all the students are required to just turn on their, their eye clicker uh, and it automatically ro uh, logs them in for attendance. They're also often used for taking tests uh, that are graded in many cases. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, so one of my interns in particular took the initiative on uh, you know, trying to reverse engineer the thing a little bit. And um, we figured out, using some software radio techniques, that it has a packet that looks like this. It, it operates at 900 megahertz. It has a preamble followed by a synchronization word, followed by some data that's an, that's, that is an encoding of the ID number of the badge or of the clicker, followed by a, uh, an encoding of what, which button was pressed, followed by something that's probably a CRC or some other kind of error control, uh, error checking uh, uh, method. And it's sent using two-level FSK. Well, binary FSK at 900 megahertz with a packet format like this, look familiar? <laughs> Let's do it on the IME. <laughs> so, uh, so we've, so this is a case, this, this is, uh, I, I, I wanted to get a demo, I wanted to get like a live demo of, uh, or, or uh, a video, like of a student with one of these things in a lecture hall taking a test 
you know, like, like, oh, let's just see what everybody else is answering before I put in my answer. <laughs> and, <laughs> and all of the interns in my office were really keen to borrow the thing, but for some reason, none of them wanted to be featured in a demo video. I don't know why. <laughs> I, <laughs> so, uh, and this is actually, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, uh, so this is okay. the competing brand by Turning Point. These guys are litigious bastards. Uh, <laughs> If, for whatever reason, you are going to buy one of these systems, use any brand but this one. Because um, real men do not burn books. Uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Book burning is not cool. What is cool, however, is instead of having a, a ribbon cable running out of your IME, it would be really handy to have USB directly within it. Um, so I made a new version of the GoodFet called the GoodFet 40, and instead of having a USB-A connector on a thick board, this has a USB-B connector on a thin board that's designed to be dremeled away to fit the outside of the case. And this is my final case mod, which supplies both power and programming. And uh, I will tell you that uh, I'm going to be doing one of these too, uh, following Travis's lead, because mm -hmm. I. I'm starting to learn that it's probably a good idea to be running uh, both ends of the uh, serial bus on the same voltage, uh, <laughs> because because I'm on like my fourth IM me, and I think that might have had something to do with it. Um, yeah. So there's this problem where if the battery is dying as you reflash the IM me, sometimes you're locked out forever, and you know. It, for us, this sucks because it means that we've got a bricked IM me and we can't do much with it. Um, but if you're trying to use the chip in a secure environment, it's terribly handy to be able to lock it out forever. So we're actually trying to reproduce this intentionally in order to create um, devices using this chip and this chip series that are more difficult to read, or more difficult to dump the firmware and keys out of, and keys, and keys, and keys. <laughs> Um, and, and finally, since you've got this handheld unit with a screen and a keyboard and a radio, wouldn't it be cool if you had a zombie invasion game? <laughs> uh, we expect to debut this at the 27th Chaos Communications Congress in Berlin. And it's a multiplayer zombie invasion game. Um, I'm working on this with Eli Skip and a couple of other neighbors. And um, it's all open source. It'll be on SourceForge in a couple of weeks. And it'll be functional a couple of weeks after that. Um, in doing sprites on this, you have to do it as like, stripes along the screen. Um, there's room to keep a frame buffer within X data RAM. But the refresh rate isn't sufficient to redraw the entire screen for every frame. So you have to sort of record which blocks have been invalidated and update only those blocks. And, all sorts of video game tricks that should have been forgotten in the 1970s. <laughs> um, yep. So that's our show. Uh, thank you kindly. Are there any questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, if you'd like a good fet for hacking the IME, you can get one from me for free by mail or in person here. I think I've got enough for everyone who can solder. Uh, real man use soldering irons or hot coals. <laughs> uh, but questions? Are there any? Great. Have fun. Oh, sorry. There were questions. Yeah, I'm blind. Forgive me. Oh, how big was the key space on the garage door? Um, that's a really good question. I didn't do any cryptographic analysis whatsoever. All I did was just was record it and replay it. Um, I could, I think it was, uh, I could look at my code and, and get an idea of it if you want to ask me that later.